Hey guys, Jen I'm sure this is another Minecraft Bedrock Edition video, and this is 1.16.100.52, so another beta for 1.16.2, and another weird, weirdly numbered beta update. I don't, I'm still not sure why they're doing 1.16.100, but this has been the same for the last three beta updates. And yes, I did miss 1.16.100.51, so sorry about that. But let's get right into the change log, and of course, do not open any worlds that you want to use the normal versions. In this beta because it will ruin your world and um, there are instructions on the change log which of course is in the description on how to get the beta if you're stuck on Windows 10 uh, Microsoft Xbox or on Android so first we have vanilla parody bug fixes brewing stand can now be crafted with blackstone players can now spawn farmland with the slash give command to pick it with tick block. Cod and salmon killed by fire damage can now is now dropped now drops cooked fish. So those are the new vanilla parody fixes. Now let's go on to the performance and stability fixes. Fix the crash that occurred when entering game with specific texture packs enabled. So yeah, it would crash your world. It's a good thing they fixed that. Add, adding tags to the Ender Dragon will no longer crash the game when reloading the world. Now we have blocks bug fixes, and I have one of them right here, I think the first one. Fence gates, fence gates now aligned with blackstone walls, so if you have a blackstone wall and a fence gate next to it, then they will align. They didn't in the last two betas. Uh, placing blocks on crimson roots and warp roots will now properly remove the roots. Target blocks no longer power additional blocks above them. Cocoa beans can now be placed on and survive on all ju jungle wood variants. Now we have one experience orb bug fix. Dropped items no longer flow too low to the ground. Dragon egg now always drops when it's destroyed by an explosion. So that'd mean um, uh, when it exploded it just disappeared because some blocks disappear when there's explosions. The dragon egg would be one of them which would really suck if you beat the dragon, exploded it to get it and then all of a sudden it's gone. So it's a good thing they fixed that. Now we have the mobs bug fix. Bug fixes. Mobs and lava were not able to find a path out. This fix makes it so they can enter a lava block if they are already in lava. Pathfinding will now account for Minecraft scale component. Updated brewing stand, button block, chest block, ender chest block, slab block, and soul sand block block types to allow pathfinding and navigation. Then I, there's technical updates. I will not go over that in this video, but remember, it's going to be in the change log in the description. Then we have, after technical updates, we have Aspirite, which also kind of goes with technical, I believe. But I'll, I'll say real quickly, because there's one. The UI now supports using Aspirite JSON files for animations, which allows more advanced animations than simple flipbooks. Uh, then we have commands bug fixes. This one I find really cool. So they added a new structure, slash structure command that allows to save and load structures without having to use structure blocks. So this slash structure, let me type this in, slash structure is like the structure block so you can save, load. I don't think you can do 3D stuff with it. Yeah, that'd be too complicated, but yeah, that's, that's pretty cool. They added it in commands now. Added slash play animation command, with, which allows you to run a one-off animation. It assumes all variables have been set up correctly for the animation to run. Uh, I still haven't figured that out. Um, I don't know too much about it, but you, can, you guys can... I messed with that a little bit. And added slash ride command, which allows you to make entities ride other entities, stop entities from riding, make rides evict the riders, or summon riders, or ride rides. So this one I was messing with a little bit before this video. It was very weird. I was thinking you can make mobs ride other mobs. I'm still not sure if you can, but I did make it work a little bit with uh, minecarts, so the rideable minecarts, boats, stuff like that, entities like that. But I wasn't able, yeah, I can name this guy Derry, this guy Darius. I was trying to mess with it a lot with commands. I wasn't exactly trying to use it, but this is an example of command. Um, this makes a minecart evict the rider, so then you saw how they got evicted there. But um, I still have to experiment with that, and if you guys know more about it, remember to comment in the comment section. Okay, now format version checks. Updated the format version field in geometry, particles, and animation files to behave as entity behavior files do. That is, you no longer need to specify a specific version for it to be accepted. 
Instead, you can just specify the version of the release you are targeting. Then we have the set banner details function. It now supports customizing non-illager banners. Up to six patterns and colors can be specified. Then we have accepted banner types, default and illager captain. Then we have accepted color values. It goes through the list. Remember to check it. I'll have it on screen real quick. And then accepted pattern values. I'll have that on screen real quick too. And possible input. That'll be on screen briefly. This is all stuff to do with banners. Okay, yeah, so that's pretty much it for this change log. We went over everything. It's not too big of a bug fix. Uh, not a small one either, but that's pretty cool. I like the commands the most. I think that's going to be awesome with the right command. Hopefully there's more to it than just the minecarts and boats and stuff like that. But that's pretty much it for this video. Please like, comment, subscribe, and share. See you guys later. Love you all. Jed Nemch out.